by the way, uh, for this episode, because Rupert does know what this one's about, yeah. uh, I kind of wanted to say, and Joe, <laughs> I know you're, you're welcome. Listening. You're welcome. It is our first, uh, our first topic that was kind of pushed forward by by a listener, and all three of you, I, I don't thank you. <laughs> I, I totally don't thank you at all, because wow, just wow. Uh, first of all, the topic is. Gentlemen, not tickling. Copernicus and Galileo no. would flat fucking freak out over this. It's the flat earthers. <laughs> We're doing something on the flat earthers. And so, first of all, yes, they're fucking serious. Yeah. They really do mean it. And yes, most of them are Christian, although one of the head members of the Flat Earth Society, and as well as one of the hosts of their podcast, which was kind of short lived, uh, there's a new one out called The Flat Earth Conspiracy now. Which is uh, aptly named. Yeah, it's it's an interesting listen. I got. I'll just tell you that. Don't do eight hours of it. I promise it will. You'll come out damaged. But one of their hosts is has come out as agnostic, but he also referred to himself as an atheist at some point. So there are some atheistic flat earthers out there. The current current flirt flat earth society has its roots in a previous flat earth society. The first was started in 1956 by Samuel Shenton. The second coming, as it were, it was more of a rebirth, came in 2004, headed up by a guy named Daniel Shenton. Oddly, no relationship between the Shentons. Wow. Yeah. Weird, right? That is very... That's, that's actually, pretty weird. That's the first and last interesting thing about this topic. No, nope, there's, like. there's a couple there's more, more real quick. Oh, <laughs> dear. Its rebirth was mainly on the web as a forum in 2009. It relaunched as a full-fledged group. Very first listed... Person to sign up for the Reformed Flat Earth Society, Thomas Dolby. Blinded me with science. Very first person you are keeping up at home. Good job. Yes. Blinded if, me. If science. you look, if you go to the Flat Earth Society and you look up their membership, which I think it was uh, 555 members when I looked, although they say there's about 3,500 thousand or 3,500 members in 2001, and it's peaked. Honestly, the site only has 555 members listed, but member number one, to give the whatever, it's like 35 buck donation or whatever, it's like joining in the NRA or anything else, first one to do it was Thomas Dolby. So, blinded by science, maybe, or not. Okay, so that's two interesting things. Okay. <clears throat> oh, there's another good, oh, that's a good one. So, before the... Uh, the Flat Earth Society was the Universal Zetetic Society, started in the mid to late 1800s by a man named Samuel Robotham. But he went by the name Parallax, which I did make note <laughs> is a fucking badass nickname. Well, what it sounds like is this guy should be in his mom's basement with a s- wizard hat and staff. <laughs> well, okay, but but it was it was in the 1800s. Again, Parallax, he needs to be in his mother's basement with a wizard's first, hat and staff rolling dice. The world's first fucking D&D player, Parallax. It's a badass nickname, though, right? So he published a book called Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, <laughs> in 1881. He died in 1884, at which point a follower, Lady Elizabeth Blount formed the Universal Zetetic Society. At its peak, the Flatter Society had 35,000, or 3,500 members. So, we're back to my notes. Uh, there are a couple different varieties of flat earthers. There's domers and planers. Domers are the people that imply that there's a large impermeable dome over the flat earth, and planers say that it's just a flat, stationary Landmass in the disc. middle of the universe, and the rest of the universe revolves around us. Uh huh. Okay. So that's that's that thing. You guys got anything you want to say before I go on? Because I I fell a little bit down the rabbit hole, and unlike my normal notes, which are factoids and bad stuff, I have factoids, and I'm gonna kind of try and argue the side for the flat earthers. Okay, so like the first, <laughs> the first thing that you have to overcome with the flat Earth thing that I've always wondered about is, if you're on a flat Earth, what keeps the water from running off the edge? Mm. How's that work? Okay, the Antarctica ar- argument. 
essentially, this is that the continent is not, or the, the Antarctic continent is not wholly explored, and there is a treaty amongst 50 countries, roughly, that you cannot go any further inland, and there's a few bases, and you can take a small expedition to a place that they'll call the South Pole, but you can't do it without military guidance. So what they say, and if you look at the Flat Earth maps, one of them, uh, well, both of them are really close to the United Nations logo. If you ever take a look at the United Nations is a flattened circular Earth, it's very similar to that, but they say Antarctica is a boundary. A so giant ice and, an ice and, ice and wall boundary. And that's keeping the water on the planet. But they, they do use the ocean as explanation frequently in that when you, even over the ocean, if you're standing at the beach, you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles, right? But it still appears, the horizon still to your eye appears flat. Now, the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches per mile. Mm -hmm. Or per 50 miles, sorry. So at 50 miles, you should lose 8 inches of your viewpoint. So a boat that's 50 miles out, you should not be able to see majority of it. And the argument is, not only does the Earth look flat, and you don't see that curvature of 8 inches per 50 mile, because you can see hundreds of miles either side, <laughs> but looking in front of you, Especially with the modern advent of the zoom technology and even camera phones, you can zoom in on a boat that's 400 miles out off the shore and still see it. That's not true. Okay. You, you don't think that's true? That's not true. unless it's a very tall boat. That's true. <sighs> you're talking nope. eight inches of perspective. Eight inches of... If you're looking out the window right now... Think rise and run, okay? Eight inches, 50 miles. Eight inches, 50 miles, okay? You're still seeing... So 400 yeah. miles would be eight groups of 50 and... Uh, 40... 40 uh, what, what 400 you say? inches. Every 400 inches. 50 miles, it drops yeah. down eight inches. Yeah, yeah. but so it's not if you're from 400 your miles there, out, like, that's, that, that is eight groups... Of 50. 400 inches. 400 inches. Which is just for simple math. So in other words, anything shorter than 400 feet. inches, if it was... It's only 37 feet. All right. Yeah. What I'm saying is if you've got a 10-inch tall thing, like in other words, if a boat is a foot away from you and it is an unladen swallow boat... <laughs> you will be African able to see, you, you will be able to see the water line on that boat, right? And how far okay, so if that boat is a hundred miles out, you will not be able to see the water line. You'll still but see the boat, but not the water you line. You should lose sixteen inches at right. So you, you couldn't see the water line. So there agreed. you go. That's what they said. How far are you above the level of that boat to begin with? Are you starting no, up on you're a cliff? You're standing on the beach. You're standing on the beach. Okay. So, so you're so you're within human height of sea level. Yeah. It's a bullshit argument. You it can't is. see it. It's like, come on. Yeah. The amount. So, just because no. you are taught something doesn't mean that it's true. How much American history were we taught that was a bunch of bullshit? Right? Okay. And without personal proof, how much. Should you believe what you were taught? Oh my God! Now you're at the eight-year-old level of argument. You are literally at the eight-year-old level of argument. If I have not proven it myself, it doesn't exist. That is the definition of Dark Ages mentality. It's. It is also the definition of, of questioning and no. developing a rational a viewpoint of a situation. No, it is the definition of developing an, a dark ages mind. Because therefore, once once you have said unless I observe it for myself and determine the proof of it for myself, it doesn't exist. Once you're at that, you have obviated the need for the written word. There's no need for that. There's no need to to read history and learn from it. There's no need to read any theorem. You cannot you cannot accept like, you know, any any physics theorem, unless you like have gone through calculus and done it all, which is so manifestly retarded. 
if that's true, then like therefore the knife in your hand doesn't exist because you have no knowledge of making steel. It's that level of stupid. And it's just like, I can't argue on an intellectual basis with somebody who thinks that's a deep thought because it's dumb and you're dumb if you think that. <laughs> <laughs> To summarize, you're just uh, dumb. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. You're just dumb. If you can't read something in a book and think this is a logically constructive argument and just go with it, then you're just dumb. If you're, you're condemned to like, unless I determine it to be true, it doesn't exist. That is so eight year old. Okay, like essentially, you're going to have to trust that two hundred years of of thinking about this problem. Of thinking about the way things worked, two hundred years, and you're only two. I'm just six. No, it is retarded. Fourteen ninety two. It is the definition of mistaking infantilism for intellectualism. It is the definition of non-critical thinking. It is the absolute essence of it, of stupidity boiled down in an elixir of such concentration that McCormick Spices couldn't charge you $5 an ounce for it in the grocery aisle. That is how stupid that is. It is the absolute purity of retardation. Next. <laughs> it is without a scintilla of doubt I can express to you that is stupid. It is dumb. It is not intellectual. It is like obfuscating the obvious in an attempt to appear more learned and more educated than you really are. You're stupid if you think that. Is We're back the, to our philosophy you're argument so here. Is so stupid. You're not trusting the fucking plumber. Is you're the, going through hundreds of years yeah. worth of bullshit just to sit there and say, huh, is this... Huh. You think you've discovered this great thing because you mm. didn't take it on faith from this person who had already discovered it. Yeah. You're that stupid. Yeah. You're that much You're, of an eight-year-old. Yeah. Throw mathematics completely out of the window. Two plus two no longer, is equal, no longer equals four. Your, your concepts of money, your concept of everything just has to go away because you haven't fucking proven it for yourself. I will admit there's a bunch of wacky You've learned nothing from raising stuff. children. That entire argument can boil be boiled down to if you have children, you understand it. If you don't have children, you think you, it is this profound thing to be yeah, like, right? you can tell a child, don't t- touch the hot <laughs> stove. The child will never learn Therein it lies the argument, until it is touches the, the hot stove. Is the red hot burner hot until you touch it as a child? No! This is stupid! That's not... <laughs> That's that is interesting to see. I a think child. we can all agree that whatever happens from that discussion is still going to be something that's going to be slightly painful. A child learns to take it on faith after they burn themselves on the stove and think, "Gee, I should have taken that on faith." This person has been around longer; they know the stove is hot. I should have listened to them, but no child ever does. But then, hopefully, after you progress beyond being a child, you learn. If somebody tells you the stove is hot, don't touch it. And it's like, okay, obviously these people haven't. They've mistaken their infantilism for intellectualism, and now we all have to put up with them. And this is why we have welfare. This is why we have food stamps. Wow. This is why we have food. <laughs> stamps at the convenience mart from otherwise grown ass adults where you have to continually take them and say no buying a corn dog why do you have to do this why do you have to do this you have to take people and just ram their head into the buying a corn dog at the 7-eleven is not a meal bam do you know it now no i don't i haven't discovered it now you have diabetes do you know it now bam no and it's like we have these people who are so stupid because they have mistaken intellectualism for infantilism, and I hate them, and I hate, I just hate the whole thing. I, want, I just like, want to take. It's like when KFC did this: buy our gallon of soda, and we will contribute a dollar to diabetes. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It is exactly that stupid. So. You're just a stupid idiot. Then explain to me, back to Antarctica, why planes don't fly over Antarctica. Because there's no reason to. First of all, planes do fly over there. I don't know why they're... Like I said, I'm going to do my best to argue it from their side. I just want to kill myself. I fell way down the rabbit hole. I just want to kill myself. This there is, are no flight paths over Antarctica. None. Okay. Right, because so, well, there's well, nowhere well, to go well, there. Hey, I gave you space. Let me have some space for my thing. Okay. 
Well, it's not technically my thing. It's their thing. But okay, I'm sorry. I've got a mellow out. You're right. You're right. I've got okay, a mellow out. Okay, let me have a little space for okay. the, their thing that I'm trying, I'm trying to argue their side because somebody's going okay, to be on their quit, side. Okay, quit oh, arguing okay. about why you're going to argue it. Just argue it. Fucking talk it. Talk it. Talk it. Talk it. Come on. All right. I'll respect you as a woman. In the morning. So, Jesus. So planes just, don't fly over Antarctica. Cuddle, don't you? And I, I actually did a Google search on this. And, so what? And it's explained by two things. The first is the location of any of the southernmost parts of, of, of the planet. The shortest paths are over the ocean, not Antarctica. Uh, basically, Sydney to Buenos Aires is the southernmost flight path, and they fly within 80 degrees. Uh, they fly at 80 degrees south rather than 74 for the reason of the second issue is that there's super high winds in the Antarctic tundras. And so there's a ton of wind. Well, so, so could stupid. it be a mystical wall that they can't fly near? No, it could be. It's just not the most direct way to get somewhere. I hear and you. if you go down, you have less chance of getting help. There's less chance of survival. Well, as we already said, the military can't go but any a certain distance in. Like nobody can really go into the center of Antarctica. You're just not fucking allowed. It's okay. done under a under a global treaty for mm -hmm. preservation of land. Okay. Which I don't know. I, I agree. Why it's very is that a conspiracy? Hat. It's very tin hat. But you can't go there. That's why it's a conspiracy. Like why should you, as a fucking card carrying American passport owner, not be allowed to go to the center of Antarctica. If you fucking gear up and train and hire folks. Because like, nobody why? wants to fly me there. You're fucking right. Because the winds and the invisible wall. Again, this is still just arguing okay. their side. So we're talking about the Antarctic. <laughs> I've got, I've got to, I've wouldn't the same wouldn't here. the same argument hold true of the Arctic then? Oh Jesus. There's a little rub there. Uh, Actually, I, I... The Arctic, there are shorter paths because northern Russia and places like Alaska, that it is shorter to fly over the top, over the northern... I, I say top. <laughs> over the northern path... He's a holy roller all of a sudden. Of the planet than it is over the southern path. Okay, Antarctica, okay, Antarctica, okay. Antarctica, let, me, so let, me, let me throw some reason into this. <laughs> and <laughs> where, where is it that you would want to go where flying, I know, right? this why, is a crazy flying one. Fuck you over all for this the idea. South Pole makes sense in terms of it being the most efficient way to get there? What is that's the argument. The continent, because it is a continent, whereas the North Pole is not a continent. No, the South Pole is too big to fly over. No, practically the no, curvature no because because a... if, if if it's a spinning blue marble, then the curvature of the Earth it makes more sense to fly side to side than it does over the there's cold no part where there's no point A hell. and point B. I agree. I'm not. I'm not arguing sense. with you on that. Bro. That's why nobody flies I'm over just, there. I'm just like I said. I'm fighting their side. Okay, what's their next argument? I feel like I'm changing poopy diapers. I just really feel like I I'm feel like I'm creating poopy the poopy diapers. diaper that I have to change. This is a this is poopy <laughs> diapers. This is poopy diapers. So I'm gonna have a new philosophical construct, poopy <coughs> diapers. And so this is it. The the blue marble. There are absolutely no images of the earth as a globe in space or from space. None. At okay. All. That are not. You're you're that are not at the very best a composite of three images, and this is from NASA's website. The most what? recent. It was 2015. NASA's website. This is their release. It was the very first image of the globe from outer space, but it was a composite. This color image of Earth was taken by NASA's Earth Polychromatic, polychromatic Imaging Camera. They call it Epic. For short, a four megapixel CCD camera four and megapixel. telescope. The image was generated by combining three separate okay. images to create a photographic quality image. The camera takes a series of ten images using different narrow band filters from ultraviolet, so ultraviolet what? to near infrared to produce a variety of science or science Where's this products. telescope? Where's this telescope? I. How about how about it's you just a, show me the fucking picture of the edge? It's a NASA. It's a NASA is photograph. It? That's the trick. There there are no photographs that are not painter retouched, and a number of painters have come forward. Show me a picture of the fucking edge of the Earth. How's that or, one? Or 
like the picture that we all think of when we look at the blue marble in the sky the one is one picture from, from like 1976 or something. There's one taken from the moon. There's right? one ever, and that that's that's so what? and it's admitted. The guy who paint retouched it said he did it. Like it was not a complete okay. picture of the fo- of the of the Earth. The blue marble has never been photographed from space. And it's a fucking fact. NASA, NASA just said they've never had one complete picture of the planet. Do you think that somewhere along the lines there's a satellite up there Dude, that quit, would have quit managed... saying me? I'm arguing they. No, you couldn't take <laughs> a complete they, picture from a satellite. Right, but all that all you have to do is allow it to go like this, and eventually it's going to find the edge, right? Wouldn't it? You would think, right? Well, you have to believe that satellites exist, and a lot of these people don't. I think the main... Do you have a fucking cell phone? A lot of these people don't. I'm not in charge of all that. There is no I want to kill myself! There's, there's a certain frequency radio system that was developed in the 60s that they say was progressed, and I didn't write down the name, but you can go find it yourself, that they say was broken off from military research at one point in time. The theory is that military research progressed, and they're using that... To emulate a satellite. They're saying there's no actual satellites? Yes. And that they're using this an advanced version of this 1960s technology radio frequency shit to emulate satellite behavior. And that you have moving focal if points. If they have no satellites, then how do they know what to emulate? I mean, dude, I'm just arguing their side. But I did it for two days, and you saw me when I came home the second day. I was like, I need to stop. <laughs> It's it. There's some interesting stuff that that if you open your head and say, well, maybe. No, it's not that interesting. No, 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 no. It's not. No, no, no. If you open your head and say maybe, you have so many issues to begin with that this isn't the first of them. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is, why not open your head and say maybe, and look at it from. The burner's red fucking hot, man. I don't know if you guys heard that from the background as Rupert was walking away, but he's, he mentioned that we might have burned our finger on the stove earlier. Uh, and I agree that that is part of it, that you did learn that there's something different. But I will go back to just because they taught you that doesn't mean it's right. Uh, argument. And and you why not I'll go into it with an open mind? I said I'm arguing their side. That I also said that I didn't end up believing in their side. I said that I'm arguing their side. Yep, this is because dead. I knew neither one of you would. Oh no! Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I would lock these fuckers in a small boat and I would sink oh, it. <laughs> I was incorrect on my math on the horizon argument. It's eight inches per mile squared. So at fifty miles, you'd see at fifty miles would be four hundred inches. So I was incorrect on my math, which does make it a little bit more startling argument. Uh, I just got to that note, in my thing. Uh, 33 feet or 10 meters. I, I typed it into a calculator. No, roughly, roughly you said 8 meters. inches per mile squared. 8 inches Not per mile Not 8 inches squared. squared per mile. Each mile squared for directional purposes. So each mile you lose 8 inches. They squared mm-hmm. it for directional purposes. Yes. Like looking right, looking left, looking yeah. forward, looking far- backward. Every and mile in each direction level, yes. you lose 8 inches. So at 50 feet or 50 miles you would lose 400 inches. And that's just... And so 400 inches no. is 33 feet ish. Or 10 plus meters. I so I was off I, on my I math on that. So another, another argument, what? No, I typed that into the. Another. And the other one, another argument is the 360 degree photo argument. Uh, there's never been an astronaut who took a 360 degree film of their location, as in turn recorded camera on and turn in a 360-degree angle. And this this leads into the argument that we were never on the moon and that we were never in space, etc., etc., because you can't do 360 degrees without showing the cameras when you're doing that kind of a thing. So, it is true, however, that there is not a 360-degree pan of outer space. And that doesn't mean that I don't personally believe we haven't been there, but that means that it's true that there is not a 360 degree scan. And and they will go farther into arguing that there's definitely not a 720 degree scan, which is all the way around horizontally and then all the way around vertically. Oh, 
Because if you're in open space in a spacesuit with a fucking active camera or a GoPro tagged to your fucking helmet, you should be able to do that, right? Why have they not done it if they're capable of it? Because these people have no education and they just don't know. Yes, we have done a 360 degree view of space. No, we've not. Space. Find it. Oh, I can find it. I can cite you the source. It's not there. I can cite you the Nobel Prize winner who did it. I don't think I'm going to because if you don't know who did the first 360 degree view of space, Go ahead, tell us. then I'm sorry, you're an idiot. Go ahead, tell us, because it's not out there. As John Google searches and Rupert tries to use dodgy Google to remember the guy's name, no, what's the name it, of the guy? Edwin Hubble was the first to do it. He looked at the redshift and expected to find planets redshifting in one direction, redshifting in another direction, not redshifting. He won the Nobel Prize for discovering all planets were redshifting away from us. So, in other words, the universe was expanding. To do this, he needed a 360-degree view, um, and he won the Nobel Prize for it. It's been recorded, it has been looked at, it has been done. It's done. We did it. You can't There's find it. your proof. You I just cited you the source. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. It's not out there. Yes, Edwin Have Hubble, you found it, John? Erwin Hubble. I no, think I'm it was that was the most it Edwin? recent one, which was Space 360, and that's um, the first ever 4K panoramic view of Earth aboard the ISS, yeah. which was done no- November 21st of last fucking year. Good. That's Hubble, the most recent one, but it was done in 4K. Okay? Hubble did it. Hubble did it. He found that in every direction you look, the universe is expanding. In every single direction, and the rate of expansion was accelerated. It is probably the most, it is probably the foremost, the most famous cosmological discovery of the 20th century was that. That is how well known it is. And the fact that these idiots don't know it tells me mm. that their theories that sound so intellectual are only intellectual because there's, they are ignorant. The they are still burning their finger on the stove. There's the hiccup. They know that fact. But they believe that it's a sham. Well, that's Believing great. doesn't make it true. I'm not arguing. You can that. say everything. You can say nothing has been discovered if you write off every discovery as a sham. Right. Right. Yes. Just like the child writes off that his parents don't know what they're talking about and, and has to go touch the, the stove themselves. Stove I agree. And they're still stuck in that. I agree. They're still stuck in that. But they actually are there living in it. Right. And and that's kind of the last of the the decent pieces of argument. The rest are a lot of more tin hat kind of stuff. Uh, this one was kind of fun. The the Hollywood or Holy Wood, as it was put, argument is it is noted that the original owner of the land that holds the Hollywood sign was owned by a conspiracy theorist who did not want to sell the land. Alas, it was sold. Long story short, and it now harbors an observatory behind it. So if you look at the picture of the Hollywood sign, you can see, see an observatory behind it. But there's been no real program, moon program movies with any solid footage from any lunar landing. Even the right stuff where they glazed over those. So they're saying that Hollywood is wrapped up in this conspiracy to cover up space travel. And that's why they don't use any actual footage from any landing. So they're, they're going movies. with the Capricorn One conspiracy, essentially yeah. we never landed on the moon. Yeah, exactly. It's it all of that. It's it's they okay. don't use any real yeah. footage. And like I said, we're moving in tin hat tin hat theory. I've done my best we're not to argue. Into, we've been there for a while. I've done my best to argue the side through the few things that I thought were kind of curious and kind of reasonable arguments. But but then it's where you don't believe in it anymore and that's where it is. Like Hollywood the holy Hollywood Conspiracy, Hollywood. Uh, I, 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 you, wow. I told you, wow. I told you, wow. It's a whole world out there. Like, go, go down this rabbit hole. It was the craziest, craziest research I've done yet. Craziest research. But it was also because they have some podcasts available, so I was able to research at work. Kept a notepad in my back pocket. It's nutty what these people have been doing. 
So another argument is the mouse argument. And this is the Pavlovian dog or the getting used to your surroundings, training for what is around you. Essentially, if you put a mouse in a cage, the mouse will eventually admit that the cage is its world. That's what it accepts as its world. As its world, when it gets out, it's confused. It doesn't know how to react with it. That's why the erratic behavior that is unexpected from a mouse outside of a cage. Well, theory is that humans are just as trainable, which I won't disagree with that. Humans are just as trainable. But uh, if we are living in this giant force field dome, have we just accepted it? Have we just let that be our reality? Because Obviously we've been not. trained we're like sending, a mouse? We're sending probes to Mars. Well, or are we? Oh, Jesus Christ. <coughs> the media feeds us lots of shit. In, In fact, while I, was, while, I was doing this, while I was doing this research... Does the, the ISS media, exist? They don't believe so. Well, of course they don't. <laughs> so there's these great videos online where they can show you the jump ropes and the harnesses that the people are wearing while they're How doing do those How do they think videos. that our cell phones work? I don't, dude. How? I only had a week. I... I almost feel dumber for actually doing this podcast. I was looking forward I do. I was, actually, I, I was actually thinking the exact same thing, that this is rotting my brain. <laughs> Having to indulge in in countering ridiculous arguments that are just yeah this this is one of those things that you take a look at on the internet and say oh my god these people are so full of shit I'm not gonna give it any more of my time right because I shouldn't have to this is just one of those I see it right from the word go there are so many issues to begin with that I'm just gonna go away and I'm not gonna let it negatively impact my world I would rather sit there and watch reruns of Law and Order. I mean, come on. Essentially what this is, is like, you know, indulging and hiring the detective squad every time your kid gets caught with pot and saying they're holding it for a friend. Yeah, but the problem is the detective squad here all has Down syndrome. Yeah. It's, It's just like indulging every ridiculousness somebody comes up with it because you're afraid to call them stupid. And it's just like, I don't have that problem. I'm just like, no, look, you're really stupid. I don't think you're stupid. I think you're dense and you're over questioning too many given facts about our actual reality when you. We have Trump in office stuff. and these fuckers still exist. You can't tell me that there's something wrong no, with the God world bless today. America, right? There's, there's something awry. I will we have, these fuckers started in England, didn't they? Oh. Uh, well. Okay, oh, these so people are everywhere. Come on. Yeah, they are. So I, I didn't make note of which of the leaders of the Flat Earth Society was the atheist guy, but I think it's the one that lives in Ireland. Mm. And I think he's like vice presidente or whatever the fuck. So there's there's a handful of people, and and what's weird is when you listen to them talk and you read their writings, <coughs> they don't come off as stupid or uneducated. They're well spoken. They're they have other intellectual things in them that make you think well, they're kind of rational, and then they start talking about this flat earth shit, and and it's it's weird to listen to somebody that like if we were all at a bar and talking about anything other than the shape of the earth, many of these people would be able to hold conversation with us. Right. So just but, don't go there. Just don't go there. Well. Yeah, don't go there. Just like any other person, you don't want to hang out with. Like, I, I'm not. You're, there's this one branch of you that is so fucking insane that I can't do it. Well, uh, now, you, you even have celebrities going into this whole thing. Okay. Well, Bob. Well, yeah. We'll B-O-B, just use this guy. Bob and Tia Tequila or Tila Tequila. And then while I was doing the research, there was there was a quickly Snopes hoax. That Shaq had come out as a flat earther. Oh, so no, like no. while I'm doing the research, one of my coworkers knows that I do the podcast, and he comes up. He goes, "Dude, since you're doing research on this this week, oh, I wanted to say, which is going to date this because it's going to time travel a little bit. But anyhow, I wanted to say that Shaq came out this week, and then he came back an hour later. Goes, up, oh, it's been snoped out. Yeah, but yeah. Wait, so Shaq is not a flat earther. No, 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 okay. he's not. But he was doing for, it to for a hot people. minute, for a hot minute, the internet said he was. Bob, on the other hand, who is, is a rapper. Bob, is on 
the fucking registry. Yeah, he drank. He's on the registry. He, so, so he drank rappers the juice and I wish or some of these rapper and Tila about. and okay. Tila Tequila. Who Again, is, people who are right. drinking the cool, they, they should be drinking Kool Aid, not Tila juice. Tequila. That sounds like another. Tila Tequila of is a porn star slash MTV host for whatever MTV MTV host is at this point in time. Uh, I'm gonna has, take that was, for low path. Who has, has gotten into the? Who's gotten into the pool as well? Uh, swimming in the Kool Aid, as it Yeah, were. and somebody pissed in that gene pool. Well, yeah, well, they pissed in that Kool Aid oh. pool. pool. Uh, I think this might be a short episode. My, no, no, my, no, 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 no. My Come attention on. is is my attention is on the declension as my propensity for violence is in ascension. This is where the this is where the okay. bricks come in. I can in, make in, a limerick out of that if I tried hard. Bob did a bunch of little. Uh, Bob, I don't want to talk about just, Bob. Just. Just hear me out on Just this. Okay? I mean, come on, no, hear me out on this. No, no. He, he, he we're made doing these topic, mentions. You okay, with the it. cities in the background are approximately 16 miles apart. Where's the curve? Explain this. So, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> fuck! <Son> of <laughs> fuck! Response. God damn it! Well, now we know where the, the compression works. <laughs> oh, fuck! I just. Earth's curve indeed blocks 150, not exactly 170 feet, of Manhattan. But most buildings in Midtown are way taller than that. <sighs> Additionally, Polaris has gone by one and a half degrees south latitude. You've never been to south of the Earth's equator, or if so, you've never bothered to look up. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, there is two reasons as to why that's full of shit. Well, there's an argument. Is and that, that these, was both done in under 140 so fucking people, characters. These people also have an argument that when you're in the south of the equator, the constellations start looking upside down. That's part of their argument. That the whole sky flips. All right, all right. Yes, your head motion and and just stunned gap mouth views or or look right now is perfect because you got to be fucking shitting me. You're you're on the other side of the planet. Shit's gonna look fucking different if you're spinning around inside of it, right? Or on a planet inside of that that universe. I. I It was a very curious rabbit hole. No, it doesn't stop. It's growing. More and more people are getting on board with this shit, man. It doesn't fucking stop. More and people more people are drinking this juice. It's growing right now. It's not it's you don't get to stop it. I I don't know. What what you get to do is look at their viewpoints and find reasonable arguments that aren't yelling at them, which is what you guys did to me while I was trying to fight their side. And I agree. I understand. Their side's a little wacky, but that's why I wanted to approach it this way, is that somebody had to be on their side for a little while. I can't stay there. <laughs> I, I agree. I can't fucking stay there, but for a little while, I could get on... Like they're, The first handful of arguments are kind of reasonable. I'm The Antarctica one's still kind of curious, but it's... There's an invisible also, force field that's been set up easily, to prevent planes from traveling. Aside. Oh, my dear sweet Jesus yeah, Christ. It's, it's super easily set aside by my head. But you know, no, you it's well not your head. It's trained. common fucking sense and a modicum of education. Just you don't even need to be education a or inundation. You don't need to be an astrophysicist. Just, just to figure some of this shit out. You really don't. You don't need to have higher level math skills to understand that these guys are full of shit. They're they're nutters. I'll agree. They're nutters. You know what? I had this figured out by. I would have taken a look at this when I got done with middle school, and been like, yeah, fuck that's, them. That seems to be like just end of high school. It seems to be when the hot point is for a lot of these people to start getting into this, and so and they never moved along. Right, and and so there's a bunch of them that are now in their forties. They're roughly our oh. age, and so they have been able to work through how to speak. And make it sound intellectual when it's really just a bunch of horse brain horseradish. I've actually been down. I have traveled to south of the equator, and I have actually been exactly on the equator. And I have been in areas of people who are not connected to the modern world exactly on the equator and I was in Ecuador with somebody the natives 
the indigenous people in Ecuador do not speak Spanish. They speak a language called Quechua. And I was with a Quechua speaker, and I was exactly at the equator, and I said, can you ask them what the concept, can they conceive of being in an area where the length of day versus night shifts according to the air, uh, to the period in the year that you're in? And he asked them, and they had no concept of that. Therefore, I think we're living on a sphere. Because if you're living at the equator, you don't have that shift. If you're living towards the poles, you do have that shift. Because the, you have, to have that, you have to be living A on a sphere, B on one that is tilted. And that's why that happens. And that could only happen on a sphere. And if you were at the equator, you would not observe that effect. If you're more towards the poles as we are, you would observe that effect. So therefore, from well, people... Well, we're almost, we're almost equidistant. The 45th it doesn't parallel matter. It doesn't matter. If you're at the equator, you don't get that effect. If you're not at that equator, you do get that effect. I spoke to people with no real contact with the outside world, and they were like, yes, we have no concept of that. The day and the night is equally the same. Then I spoke to people in my town, and they're like, of course we know that it shifts. And it's like, you can only get that with a sphere. Therefore, good enough for me, it's debunked. Because I don't think that these weird semi-Stone Age people down at the <laughs> equator were somehow in on some Kubrickian conspiracy right. to Kubrick, fool the world. Kubrick it's just like, I just don't buy it. It's just so landing. stupid. It's amazing, though, how, how deep it it's gets. Like, and, and there's a lot of... There's a lot of pseudoscience involved, and I agree. And then there's the ones that you just can't swallow, like the jackass with the huge 747 model trying to pretend to show you how the, <laughs> earth, how the plane can't fly around the globe. And, and like, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't pan out. It just, just doesn't. I just can't stand Now, I may not stuff. personally know somebody who's sailed around the world or flown all the way around the world. You do. Uh, I, but it, it just seems way too feasible that you could sail around the world and way too not feasible that you can't no matter what the flight patterns are done because they argue that the flight patterns are built to confuse your knowledge of distance and really it's just flying you from hub to hub and and it, there's just too many people it's a common conspiracy theory there's too many fucking people involved in this conspiracy for it to stay secret what do, what do snipers have to take into account when they are actually that's firing? one of the biggest arguments is the curvature the of the globe effect. yep the curvature of the globe I, although I would love to be able to shoot a gun so far that I have to take into account the fucking curvature of the globe. <laughs> like, no, any... I'm okay at 100 yards, but like beyond, and there's no curvature of the globe involved at 100 yards. Any gun you shoot, you have to take that into account if you want X level of precision. Not at 100 yards. Yeah, at 100 yards, if you want this level of precision, you would have to take it into account. At 100 account. yards, you've lost a 30th of eight inches. Well, if you think, you know, I can guarantee you if you're doing a physics experiment no, where uh, you're measuring 50th. things and you're using lasers and blah, 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 you take that into account at 100 yards. You damn sure do. It's a, it, 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 okay, the, maybe the, that's, the precision maybe that's is why I'm matters. only a decent shot at 100 yards. The precision the is what matters, not the distance. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. How much do we got to pat out in this one? I don't know. Should we just wrap it up and leave it a little short? I don't know, because we're <laughs> all very angry here. I'm not we that are. angry. I, I thought it was a fascinating walk down somebody else's path. Well, I, my path. I, I don't know if this one's true, but I, I found an article here that flat earthers are now saying that there are no such thing as forests on Earth. <laughs> no I went way down the Earth. rabbit hole and didn't even run into that. Um, it, it's honestly, I, I really can't tell what's happening in the article because it's just this m menagerie of big words that are used to debunk them. Um, you start with a montage of forests, peaceful scenes, yada yada yada. Um, what they're saying that this is what uh, a film scene from Endor or some shit? What's going on? Essentially, yes. 
Our, our world isn't even now. I don't know, but we go camping in the middle of a forest every fucking year, at least a handful of times. Yeah, but the, these like, grand there's, forests. There's forests. I live in Oregon, yeah. bitch. I um, guarantee you there are forests. Yeah, well, there's a I video personal here. proof. You know, when, when this comes out, well, I'll, I'll, I'll email this to Tyler, and he can send up the uh, the YouTube video Why as well. Why more jobs? Because that's what you're good for. Maybe what I'm good three, but either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm down to fucking end this thing. Um, okay. Uh, to wrap up, I obviously found what I felt was kind of some compelling evidence for their argument. I still believe in our spinning globe simply because there's too much suspension of disbelief required for me to, to ignore it. For me to think that there was, that the earth is actually flat. I, I, and maybe you can call it the fact that I had a globe in my kindergarten class and I've been conditioned that way. You can argue that all day long, all you crazies out there. But you know what? I'm on a motherfucking spinning globe. And that's the way it is. And I tried really hard. To argue their side, because like I said, neither one of you would, and made for kind of an interesting, interesting conversation, but you're fucking numbskulls. Go ahead, John. Okay, here... Numbskulls. Y'all are full of shit! <laughs> Y'all are full of shit! Every fucking one of you, you're full of shit! You're full of shit, full of shit, full of shit, full of shit, full of shit! And wrap up. Not the most intellectual wrap-up ever, but okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a different take on this because I'm trying, I'm trying to boil down why this kind of thing makes me so angry. And um, I'm going to try and be a little bit more sure and say, yes, part of what makes me angry is this is phony intellectualism. It is continuing to ask it's begging the question and thinking that's intellectualism and it's not uh question's been answered uh your queries are wrong and we're not going to continue to discuss them ad infinitum but the thing that aggravates me the most about this is this is one of the earliest examples of a phrase that i hate science at works it's the most it's one of the earliest examples of pop science where you really have not gone through the rigorous discipline. Um, you have gone through science on a superficial level. You have not gone through it on a rigorous basis. And then therefore, you think that you're positing about stuff based upon a superficial level uh, is worthy of consideration, and it really isn't. Things like asserting that there is no 360 degree of view of space when the most remarkable discovery, the redshift of uh, Hubble, uh, is quite well publicized. And if you had thought about it at all, you would have known that, but you don't. And uh, that the reason why you don't know that is because you have not gone through a rigorous discipline and you're just like science at works. And um, science is about modeling, okay? So you will hear somebody express to you that mm -hmm. physics, physics, it works. And it's like, no, it doesn't. Physics is a model. And we go along with our physics in a rigorous discipline that models what we see. And then when it begins to, to not model it, we, di we discard that model and we go with a different model. That one we have disproven. We now go with a different model. And um, with physics, it, this is very easily demonstrated where we have like new, the Newtonian view of the universe and then we discover that doesn't describe things at a subatomic level. And so then we get into Einsteinian universe and this models things very well, but it doesn't model the Newtonian universe that we observe. And so you get into things like... Um, the uncertainty principle, whereas if you're going to have that be true, then you also have to have this idea of things popping into existence and then out of existence and into existence and then out of existence. And you get to the point where it's just like, well, that's what we have and we're waiting for a better model. But the point of the matter is, is we discard the old models that don't work. And this is why. And the fact that you are uneducated in why they don't work 
is not assertion that they're still plausible. And these people are hung up on that. They cannot accept because they are not willing to study rigorously enough to understand why we don't accept them. They just still keep saying why and they are not willing to go and put in the real work like going and maybe taking four years of physics and they're understanding. This is why it doesn't work. They just are more content to sit around and say why, 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 why and it's like you're dealing with an eight-year-old child and it's like I am so sick of this crap. Where it's just like, there's never been a 360 degree view of the universe. And it's like, yes, there has. Yes, there has. Read all about it. It happened in the 40s and the 50s. Read all about it. It's a long time ago. You don't know about it. You're uneducated. That is not an intellectual basis for proceeding forward. The fact that you didn't know, now you did. Go back. There you go. You're wrong. 